hey hey everyone and welcome in or welcome back it's a monkey mar before we get into today's uh, video please make sure you click that uh, subscribe button the bell for notifications and of course uh, the like Let's get into the Monday update. I've got one a new update on Dulce Marie Alvarez, the little girl that went missing from Bridgeton, New Jersey. We have a Alabama student missing, Adam Bell Adaldell, 22. And let's get nosy and let's get into Morgan Gentile, the one who claims she is not a Barry morpheus a mistress and with that let's uh, get into it let's get into the first update on dulce maria alaves fbi leads emerging an amber alert probe for a five-year-old new jersey girl this article was on september 10th at 2020 two days ago the FBI says new leads provide hope on the first anniversary of the New Jersey search for missing five-year-old Dulce Maria Alaves, and here's why. New Jersey, the FBI says leads have emerged and the agency is optimistic it will eventually solve the Amber Alert case involving five-year-old Dulce Alaves that has now reached its first anniversary. FBI Special Agent Daniel Garibrandt spoke to Patch about how there are leads coming and his agency has pursued them since Dulce first disappeared on September 16th, 2019. Even as he suggested that cases like these sometimes can take years to solve. We are still optimistic that Dulce will be found, he said. There's still information coming. We get lots of look-alike leads. Garibrandt spoke to Patch to update the public as the probe reaches its first anniversary. Dulce's disappearance from a Bridgeton Park has sparked a nationwide interest and launched a search that spanned several states. Few solid clues have publicly emerged. However, since Dulce went missing while she was playing with her brother and her mother waited in the car, Garibrandt noted that the disappearance could bear a resemblance to other well-known cases where the missing person was hidden from the public view for months or even years. Garibrandt cited the 1991 kidnapping of J.C. Duggard when she was 11 years old, who then remained missing until 2009. He also cited the case of Elizabeth Smart, who was kidnapped at 14 and was not discovered until nine months later. In each of those cases, Garibrandt said, what we see time and time again is that the community solves it. And if the community can be cooperative and provide leads, he said, then Dulce will likely be found. Also, in many of these cases, the kidnapper typically knows the kidnapping site, and he lives in the area of the disappearance. Their understanding of the area, he said, usually helps them plan out the crime before it happens. Garibrandt believes that's what happened here, and the FBI has established the following from the case. So they are saying that they truly believe that somebody took a Dulce to keep her as their own or whatever the case may be. And I find that very, very interesting. The FBI has video of vehicles in the area, but the quality of the video is not good. And the agency has been unable to identify what was there. The FBI knows there were people in the park who could provide useful information and the agency has made a plea for them to come forward. If you were in the park between 3.30 and 4.30 p.m. on September 16th, please contact us. The coronavirus has not likely impacted the investigation, although not having children in school has made it a little more difficult to track them. Also, it's harder to recognize children with masks on their face. A March tip involving law enforcement officers in Austintown, Ohio, who said they conducted a search of an area based on a tip they received. 
proved to go nowhere. Nothing came of that, Garbrandt said. Now, those might have been the cryptic letters that were being sent regarding Dulce from somebody to different states and different people. Garibrand said the FBI also sought to reassure the immigrant community that the agency is not interested in deporting anybody who may be in the United States illegally. If the FBI or another law enforcement agency approaches them, he said it's only to get information on Dulce. Their immigration status, he said, is irrelevant. We are interested in one thing, and that's bringing Dulce home. Garibrand also said Dulce's mother had... The extended family have been fully cooperative, and he's not interested in judging people's behaviors because that often goes nowhere. The family has defended Dulce's mother against criticism that she hasn't appeared to be passionate enough in her public interviews. Let's remember, people, stop judging people for how they act because everybody acts differently to different situations. There is no indication that they are doing anything other than being fully cooperative, he says. Dulce's mother, Noema, defended her behavior in a recent interview with ABC6 saying she loves her daughter. Dulce is a Hispanic girl who is about 3 feet tall, weighing 60 to 70 pounds, with brown eyes and brown hair. She was last seen at a Bridgeton Park wearing a yellow shirt with an elephant on it as well as black and white pants and white shoes, police said. Detectives said they believed Dulce was taken by a light-skinned Hispanic male, 5 feet 6 inches to 5 feet 8 inches tall with a thin build, facial acne, no facial hair and wearing orange sneakers, red pants and a black shirt. He allegedly led Dulce from the park to a red van with a sliding side door. Anyone with information is asked to contact the New Jersey State Police Missing Persons Unit, the Bridgeton Police Department, or call 911 immediately. And I am going to drop this information down below in the description. Investigators are continuing to analyze information they've received along with the hundreds of tips that have been collected through the FBI tip line. Anyone with information they think is important to the FBI investigation is urged to call 800-CALL-FBI and choose option 4 and then option 8 or text the information to tip 411 subtext Bridgeton. Anyone with video or pictures can upload them to www.fbi.gov slash alaves and of course like I said before I will put all that information down below so they really do seem like they have leads and they are working this case and probably know more than what they're saying like usually but I really do hope that they do find a little Dulce Maria Alves she's been missing for exactly one year in two days so if you are not familiar with a dulce alvarez is a story i do have videos about her so go ahead and um check them out with that let's get into the next update so this is not an update this is actually a new missing person case out of Alabama. So we've got college student vanishes after going out to get money from an ATM. This was September 13th of 2020. A 22 year old college student left his Alabama State University dorm room in downtown Montgomery late Tuesday night to get money from an ATM. But his friends say he never returned. And now police and his family are searching for him. Adam Abel Adaldel is a second year student last seen wearing a white shirt, checkerboard pants, and Air Jordan 12 sneakers. His mother Toya Cohill said he doesn't have a car on campus and left without any indication he would be gone long. He left his book bag and phone charge behind and now that phone is dead. Several members of the Dowdell family have come to Montgomery from the Alabaster area where he's from some 70 miles away. I've slept three hours a day, 
Cohill said. He always talks to all of us, she said, from my mama to my daughter to my son. Somebody's going to talk to him every day. Cohill said she last spoke to her son on Monday, and his siblings spoke with him the following day, but on Wednesday she got messages from friends saying he hadn't been back to his dorm. No one had heard from him. Okay, this is what bothers me. So he has been not heard from for a week. Today is Monday the 14th, and we are going back to last Monday, which was the 7th. Then the siblings spoke to him on Tuesday the 8th, and the 9th is when all of this went down. I just want my child back, Cohill said. The ASU Police Department released a statement about Dowdell's disappearance and said they had opened an investigation with help from Central Alabama Crime Stoppers and assistance from surrounding law enforcement agencies. His hometown, Alabaster Police Department, posted about the missing man Saturday night. The Alabama State University Police Department received Notification on Wednesday of a male student who was possibly missing. The student is from Alabaster, Alabama area and has not been seen since Tuesday afternoon. ASUPD has opened an active ongoing investigation with help from Central Alabama Crime Stoppers and assistance from surrounding law enforcement agencies. Anyone with any helpful information is asked to please call the ASU Police Department and I will leave that number in the description. So, and according to Crime Stoppers, 22-year-old Adam Dowdell Jr. was last seen on ASU's campus September 8, 2020. Officials say Dowdell is 5'9 and weighs 160 pounds. He was last seen wearing a white shirt, checkerboard pants, and a black and white Jordan sneakers. And I will leave the Crime Stoppers number as well below in the description. So that is all that seems to be out on him, Adam Adaldo, and let's get into the last but not least. We're just going to dig into Barry Morphew's worker and see what kind of background she has. Now, I am going to touch on the employee of Barry Morphew's, well, the ex-employee, because I am going to look in her background. I haven't even looked yet. I haven't even tried. Like I like to do is look first with you guys. But we all know the rumor, and let me read the points of the article. If you have not seen the article, I will attach the link below in the description. But in my opinion, I don't think that Barry Morphy was having an affair with this woman. But employee of Susan Morphew's husband denies they were having an affair and confirms his hotel room stink of chlorine the night before Colorado mom vanished. So I thought, well, how would she know what the hotel room smelled like? You read the article, you see, I mean, maybe her and Jeff Puckett had something going on, but Barry, ah, I don't know. So Susan Morphew, 49, was reported missing on Mother's Day, Sunday, May 10th. We all know this. Her husband, Barry Morphew, was away on business 150 miles from their home. So first, he was at firefighter school. Then he was in Colorado Springs. And then he was at the hotel. Morgan Gentile, who was working with Barry, has denied being his mistress. Ah, my gut tells me I'm going to have to agree. She said Morphew called her frantic, saying they had to work on May 10th. That's because, like I've always said, I do not believe that Suzanne Morphew was even around on Mother's Day. I think something happened before he went to the hotel, and like I've said in the video, that he took her with her. She confirmed DailyMail.com reporting that their hotel smelled of chlorine. Now, maybe her and Jeff spent the night in that hotel. I don't know. I don't care. I'm not going to speculate. Morphew said that Gentile is a meth head and not to be trusted. Now, Andy Mormon has... Now, Andy Mormon, her brother, Suzanne Morphew's, 
has a big search coming to Salida, but I don't think she's in Salida. I think she's near Denver, Trevor's home, Denver area. Um, that's just my opinion now. But the purpose of this is let's go check out Morgan Gentile and see if we could find anything on her. So I will say that Morgan Gentile is pretty boring. She does not have any criminal background. She has a few judgments against her, which are from one main financial group, one in the amount of 6400 rounded off, and one about 7000 Filing date was in 1-18-2009 and then 2-18-2008. So that might actually be the same one with more interest charges. I don't know though, I'm just a guessing. And she has a few cars, she has no traffic record, and that is really about it on her. And I personally, from looking at her and seeing her background, do I think she's a meth head? No. Now, could she have started using meth? Maybe. I don't know. I think, in my opinion, Barry did what he did with Suzanne. And I think he knows that he's running out of time. And I said with Andy Mormon coming to Salida in like, what, nine days? I said they need to check between Salida and where he went to the hotel. And so real quick, I'm going to show you on a map Trevor's house, the hotel, and where he was coming from at their home in Salida. Oh, and also she has a she has a professional license as an electrical apprentice issued on 420 2018 so she definitely seems to have things together and no records and who knows right i guess a time is going to tell on this a case okay let's go over this map real quick so i can give you a visual of what I am talking about. So the Morphews live here, down here, Susan R. Morphew Hope Foundation. It's a three hour and 22 minute drive, and who knows which way the man could have went. Anywhere he goes, except for if he comes up here and he comes around, Trevor lives right about here. And the hotel where Barry went to stay which there was no job to be done, a job didn't get done, was right here. Now, I don't know if Barry is super smart or if he's super dumb, but I have a feeling that they're going to start closing in on Mr. Morphew. So, that's what I speak of. So, which way did he go? He could have come around here, went through these mountains, there, who knows? I'll tell you what though, everyone knows how vast Colorado is and unfortunately winter is upon us and I really hope that Andy Mormon somehow gets to look in, in an area like this. Anyways, um, if you have not seen what Trevor and his wife Sarah looks like, stick around because I'm going to show you next. I was very curious to know what Trevor Noah looked like and his wife Sarah. So here are a few pictures of Trevor. I'm not sure if that's his mom, which would probably be Barry's sister. And they have two. Yeah, we're going to skip that picture. I'll cut that out, the picture of their kids. And that's it. Make sure all of you also check out Profiling Evil if you have not. And check out the search for Suzanne Morview with her brother, Andy a Mormon. Let's keep our eyes open and spread the word on Dulce Maria Alaves. And also, let's keep our eyes open and spread the word in Alabama for Adam Dell. Dell and he goes by Bell. Also, nothing much on that little Morgan, Morgan Gentile. And I really hope that somebody is watching Barry Morphew. 
because with everything going on right now and all of these searchers coming to the Salida, Colorado area, I wonder if little Barry Morphy was nervous. In my opinion, he knows exactly what happened. All right, guys, with that, it is a wrap. And I want to thank you all for leaving your comments. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike whichever you prefer. And subscribe. Everyone stay vigilant and have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. I am out.